<laughs> okay, welcome to Sintech. Okay, so uh, for those who are first timer, so today we are here for our class number five, EC two o one, product branding and strategy. So we are in the second module already of our e-commerce series. So we are uh, today. I have only one speaker, Xiao. She will be speaking for the whole uh, event, two hours. So make sure you pay attention. Anyone bring your your, your own product to show her? Our speaker. Anyone bring your own product? No. Okay, no problem. Okay, before we start for first time, I'll just do a short introduction. What's happening at Citec and what uh, program that you can tap on. So basically, um, by the way, my name is Salman. I'm in charge of the e-commerce program at Citec. So uh, Citec is under state government of Selangor. So what we do here is we are promoting e-commerce and also startup program. Okay. Uh, our proposal until 2021, which is next year, we are focusing on traditional SME, offline to online. So whoever that have a brick and mortar business, yes, you are our, our target audience, and also cross border e-commerce. For those who are already selling online, then we will help you to sell cross border. And then uh, for startups, for a big uh, corporation, so industry for example. Okay, we uh, about CTEC, we started in 2015. Uh, so th at that time when we started, and Shopee uh, just, uh, you know, starting also. But now after five years, now we are 2020, they have, uh, you know, 500,000 sellers in their apps. So when we started in 2015, we realized that this uh, e-commerce uh, business online is something that we need to, you know, teach people. Okay. So over the four years, we facilitate over 200 million under a few of our programs, ACP, Smart City, Top ECM, and so uh, Online 100 and Apps 100. So in CTEC, we're focusing on four trusts. So first is Online 100, Brands 100, E-commerce Education, and STCC. Let's have a look one by one. Trust One, Online 100. So this is a program for new uh, merchants, brand and mortar merchants, who want to join online, online uh, start selling online. So we are partnering with uh, Ubilee, Shopee and Lazada. So if you want to onboard to this program, you can uh, contact me or my colleague outside. So uh, we will help you to join this first. After you completed this, then you can consider to join cross border platform. Okay, that is our agency uh, partners. So, Online 100 and Brands 100 is the uh, bundle program where if you join this, you will definitely join this uh, Brands 100. So, what you get in Brands 100 is you get your own e commerce website with your own domain. For example, ABC, Selambahan, then you get your www.abc.com. Previously, is a uh, Apps 100, but I think this year we updated our program. We changed it to website. So, requirement to join this program first, you must have a product or services, and then business address must be in Selangor. If you are selling in Perak, can you join this program? You cannot, but you have to open a branch in Selangor. Okay, Malaysia age. 18 and 65 above 65 things still can uh, so we never had any uh, you know people sign up above 65 yet so registered company yes SSM is must so you must have at least 25 SKU to get a free website if your program if if you are below than 25 you can join apps 100 but to get brands 100 to get a website you need 25 SKU Okay, so other than that, uh, special distance, yeah. So this is the, the map, uh, so you have to fill up online. So you contact me, or Azwan, my clinic, so it will help you. Okay, so this one, I'll skip first. E-commerce education, yes, today. So this is our class today, for those who are new, you can take the schedule outside. So we have three modules, one, two, three. So this one, finish, gone, February, finish. Coming up in March and April, so we have five classes. 
product branding today, the next content management and strategy is in Chinese and English language. And then after that, next we have viral content technique is in Malay. And then two more, customer relationship and Google Analytics is in English. This is important uh, part of the e-commerce uh, business where you learn about the process. Now, this, the first one is introduction, meaning that how to set up your store online. So from here, you will learn about payment data, logistics, blah, blah, blah. I think there's a music background. Okay, then uh, set up your store, branding, product, description, everything. Google Analytics, online traffic, you have to understand the market. And then digital marketing, so that's what you promote. If you go introduction first, then digital marketing, then you come to e-commerce process, then you will lose your money. Because your product is not good, your branding is not there, then you spend on it. Is it one thing? Okay, it's a waste. Okay, next, uh, our other programs, we have ECF Equity Crowdfunding and your program, where you, where you can learn about uh, equity crowdfunding, other methods of raising funds. I think uh, with our partners, my starter, we managed to, recently, there are five uh, successful projects. This story, I think uh, there are a few more. They just uh, successfully raised a total of three million in it. So you can consider if you are running a business, when you expand the business, you can consider ECI as part of it. And then this is our new program. We just finished uh, on Saturday. Jelajah uh, is our digital slango. So we, uh, so this program is actually our target is to bring about more merchants, make micro entrepreneur or SME, manufacturers, suppliers, students, and local community. So, so what is this program? Is we will go to every location in Selangor. We go to uh, last week, uh, no, last Saturday we went to Bangi. You were there, yeah. So next one will be I'm not sure yet. We haven't confirmed yet, but the coming soon will be total uh, of this year will be eight location. So what we what we do at that location and the area is we will bring a topic. Uh, these uh, partners Shopee, Avana, Boost, Ninja Van, and Google Malaysia. So we will bring the the whole uh, partners to your area. And then you can learn, you can onboard on the spot with them. Okay, so for more info about this program, you, you have to follow our Facebook page because everything will be updated there. Any questions so far? Understand, eh? For newcomers, you understand, eh? Okay. And then this is one of our program, premium program, we call it premium program because the cost is expensive, 3000 ringgit and above. Okay. And then we have CTEC Academy where we put all the slides, all the video that today's session, all the e-commerce related session we put in our website, also YouTube channel. So trust for we have a STC. Today you are at STC Islamo Digital Creative Center. What do we have here is we have a co-working space, uh, 100 ringgit per person per month. So it's considered cheap if you want to start, if you just want to start your business. Okay? Because you just need an internet, laptop and some knowledge. And then photo book, a free photo studio. You can take photo for free. We provide camera equipment and the rest. And then other sneaker studio, uh, they close down, so empty. Other than that, we have a startup uh, program. So a lot of people asking me, what is, between, uh, what is the difference between startup and also e-commerce? Okay, startup normally focusing on solving a problems not selling a product. Yes, they are selling a product. Some, some startups, they are selling a product, but at the same time, they are solving a problem. Okay? So that's a different. Like e-commerce, we are purely selling our product. Okay? But startup is a, is a bit different. So uh, since 2016, we have a few programs for startups. Startup Quest is more on ideation stage. If you have an idea, so you can you know, share about your idea. And this is like idea only. But after 2016, we have a um, um, pitching session, and then we have a Zoom startup series. This, if, if, you're in, if you are in a startup industry, I think you should join this because over here they will talk about funding, and then product and disruption, women, trainers, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the schedule also in front. And then we have a special program called Selangor as a program. This is, a, I think, about four months intensive program. So if you're part of this program, you have to attend all the classes with mentors every weekend. 
Okay, so towards the end, we'll, um, we'll bring you to the uh, is a reward. So from, from 30, we'll select 10, we'll start up. In 2018, we bring them to China for a study visit to some of the locations, Alibaba, China, artificial intelligence, and so on. Last year, we bring them to Indonesia to visit a Gojek, Bukalapa, okay, all the internet, uh, Indonesia startups. Then for e-commerce, so we selected some of the, the, the merchants that we think is potential. And then so we bring them to Alibaba 2018. Last year, we didn't bring uh, any e-commerce. Okay, so other than that, we have a top e-commerce merchant award. If you are selling online, you should join this. <coughs> this is the only, I think, the, the only award for e-commerce merchants where I think it's about two months, you have to, if there's a competition also in it, so you have to compete. Last year, we, we, we have 99 contestants. In two weeks, we generated about 30 million sales and 170 orders. So if you are an uh, e-commerce merchant, you can join this. But there are some requirements to join this. Your sales must be 50,000 and above in any of the month in 2020. Okay? Let's say during Raya campaign or CNY campaign or any campaign, you can get 50,000 and the rest of the month, just 10,000, yes, you can join too. Okay, the rest are just uh, our conference. And okay, yep, <clears throat> I think that's all. Anything you can ask me directly, I will be willing to answer any, any questions. Okay, without further ado, I think we let's start our session uh, today. We have 120 minutes, so there's no break. So after that, we'll be at the break. Please ask a lot of questions about product branding and all this because I think it's good for you and your own business. Okay, thank you guys. Listen and then you also do the work. 
you will also apply the knowledge that I've just shared and looking at all the examples that I'm sharing with you. Then we go into creating your value proposition and what is the positioning you want your consumers to remember. Time. How are you going to bring all these things that you have decided as a direction to your consumers? So how do you communicate through all the different marketing channels as well as your packaging? And we're going to go into zooming deep, deeper into e-commerce because this is where you are selling your products. How do you win in e-commerce? What are the key tips? And then in terms of marketing, other marketing channels like Facebook or Instagram, what are, what are the content that you can use? So we are learning a lot of tips today and I hope it gives you a lot of inspiration on your product. When you have those inspirations, please start to write down on your phone. Don't waste a minute. Today is application for your brand and your business. Alright? So far so good? Okay. Now, expectation setting. I'm not the kind of person who likes to just stand here and just talk. It doesn't make sense for two hours. I'm sure at some point you'll fall asleep. So, the format that I'm actually looking at doing is knowledge, sharing, case studies, and then you apply to your own business. So what I would like to call for all of you today here is involvement, which means I'll be asking a lot of questions during the case study, I'll throw it to you for you to feedback. So that the more you involve, the more you learn. And the more you learn, the better you become in branding, in marketing. So what I want you to do is to also scan this QR code because uh, you probably <laughs> be able to access a Google form and in this form is where all the questions of the different topics that I'm going to run through with you today. So you answer those questions for your own brand and business and you can send the link to yourself later. Okay? Or I'll, I'll do, or I will do so for you as well. Yeah. So scan this, let your browser open and just keep it open, don't close it and as we go through, you will then be able to answer those information. Let's get an empty seat here, if anyone wants to come to the front. So, marketing versus branding. Can I understand a show of hands? Can I have a show of hands? Who knows clearly what are the differences here between these two, two words? Anyone? Okay. Probably I'll just explain because a lot of people are very confused. I'm going to put this in a very simplistic term. Eh? Marketing basically is what you as a business person tell your consumers. So for example, I have, I have great products. I'm telling you, I'm, that is marketing. I'm telling you, I'm running that business from a brand perspective. And then advertising is how I say to you, I keep saying all the different channels, I try to tell you through mobile phones, through ads, through Facebook or whatsoever. That is advertising. And I keep on telling you the same consistent message. I have great products. Then what is branding? Branding is when your consumer knows that I have great products. It becomes, it went into the consumer's mind. That is branding. Branding is not for, so what do you want to do branding? Because you want to do it for the consumers to remember you. So the key word here is what? Remember. All of us, the way our psychological mind works is that every single category, or if you want to find a product to, us to solve a certain problem, there's always a certain brand in the mind. You want to basically own that top of mind when it comes to your brand, okay? So that is branding for you. And basically, if you look at these two circles, what you do and say, and how people feel, in the center of it, that is where your brand sits. It's not something that you could basically measure. Sometimes it's also a bit about the feelings, and about what you get to offer. It's in the center and the core of it. So sometimes I ask you, when it comes to buying cheese, what is the cheese brand that you think of? Anyone? Kraft. Why? Maybe because you have seen so many of their advertisements. 
maybe your, 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 your sister is actually eating that right now. So you see, it is always inside of us that we very unconsciously decide what brands we use in our life, right? So basically branding and marketing, if you want to basically dissect it further, in terms of what is the elements within branding, you can have logo, your tagline, your fonts, your colors, but actually it's more than that. There's also visual style, personality, your reputation, what is your promise to them, yeah? Your value proposition itself. There is actually beyond logo, but logo is of course one of the most basic fundamental of representing your brand. Then you have marketing. Marketing is again the action, all right? Branding is the essence, marketing is the action. So you have advertising, offers, your promotion, your SEO, everything goes and sits under marketing, okay? So branding versus marketing, you have a clear idea now? What exactly the difference are? Branding, consumers. What they feel, what they think about your brand. It's always them, it's never about you, okay? You don't matter. They themselves, what they feel matter, all right? Now, let's move on to today's session. So what we're gonna do is that there's gonna be a very clear um, flow of three pillars. First is for you to understand, and then in this, in this sense of understanding is you want to know who you are talking to. You have to be very clear, right? Because you have limited funds. You always need to make sure you spend the money to the right target audience. And the sharper you are, the better it will be. You need to also know their needs and aspiration. That's how a lot of successful brands out there achieve what they are today. They have a certain brand value when they sell it at the end of the tenure because they have actually built a brand that is aspirational and fulfilling the needs. The third part is knowing your competitors. You are not alone in the world selling your products, right? How do you define that? Where do you sit within the whole frame versus competitors? So you understand. First session, understand clearly who you are talking to, who are you competing with, simple. Second, then you start to define. Now you bring your brand and your product in. You start to define what actually a brand really shows in terms of a personality. Because a brand, like I said, is feeling, right? How your consumer perceives you. So you need to talk to them like a human form. You need to have a personality to your brand. And you have to be very clear about the benefits you're trying to deliver and the reasons to believe. Which means, why do I trust your, your craft cheese is the best cheese? Why? Tell me. So reasons to believe is important. And then you create your value proposition and your brand positioning and you stick to it. You consistently advertise this positioning to your consumer for one year, two years, three years and see how your sales will continue to grow if they fully believe in this positioning that you have. Right? So define. Now after you have defined, all these are just literally words. It doesn't mean anything until you put into a communication channel and content. So communicate part, I will actually talk about three things. One is on how do you do product branding via packaging. If any of you have products, what do you, you will see some good case studies about the different packaging. The second one is on the marketing content. There's two parts to this, one is e-commerce. How can you make sure your particular store within the e-commerce look attractive to compare to other competitors? And the, sec the third part is basically marketing tips. Generally, in terms of content marketing, what can you do from blog, you know, from advertisement, from dramatization, and etc. So there's a lot of content here to actually cover. It's going to be very hefty. So I don't expect you to sit down and listen, like I said, involve. I'll be asking a lot of questions through time. So raise your hand and just shout the answers, especially the ones from the back, okay? So far so good? Can I hear from the back as well? So far so good? Yes. Good, okay. Oh, let's start on with the first one. Know your target audience. So this is basically what in the FMCG world used to do. We actually have three key pillars. The first pillar is demographics and geographics. 
This is basically the dry facts that we talk about. Now, how do you actually identify your TA? If you have a completely new product, you want to go into this business, the only way for you to understand your TA is to actually do survey. A lot of research, a lot of survey, to know where your potential lies. So for example, I'm selling a hoodie, right? I wanted to sell a hoodie, I bring this hoodie from China, it's very cute. It has a lot of cute mascots. And then I wanted to target, should I target the 15 years, 15 years old to 20? Or should I go with the university graduates, which is 21 to 24? Or should I go with the even older, like 25 to 29? Who should I talk to? I don't know, who actually would be interested with my hoodie bag? I need to go out and actually uh, do research. I need to talk to a 15-year-old, a 20-year-old, a 29-year-old, and see how would they respond to my product. Do you like this design? Do you think it's cool? How do you feel about it? Then you know, you talk to 10 of these people from different groups, you realize that, hey, almost 8 out of 10 people from the 15-year-old group likes my product. This should be very potential for me. The size of business, the size of revenue is so much bigger, right? So identifying your demographics is important because there's just too big of a population. You're talking about more than 30 million population in Malaysia. You need to really look into, if, I, if you're gonna talk to only 100,000 people, you want to make sure a high percentage of this 100,000 people who buy your product, that is your objective. So demographics and geographics, you put in your drive facts. Age, gender, income, education, where do they work? Are there uh, any race or ethnic? Where are they residing? What is the language do they speak and read? Things like that, understand that. Psychographics goes a little bit deeper. So it's quite pointless to have demographics because it's still a shell. You need psychographics to really understand a little bit more about this person. So interests, hobbies, values and personalities. What is the lifestyle preference? What are their opinions towards stuff? These actually help to shape your targeting, uh, ads targeting more precisely because you know who you want to talk to, right? So for example, if I have, um, say, a, a, a cooking sauce product, I'm sure that I wanted to talk to people who will watch TV that uh, watch recipe TVs or follow maybe Chef uh, One or something. So this becomes easier for me to target them because I know they would basically be watching this channel. And this TA profile helps you in your advertising strategies. Behavior: how or he how he or she responds to your category to your product. So in terms of how does this person try to get knowledge to learn more about your category? What kind of interaction do they use? Do they prefer WhatsApp? Do they go and do face-to-face? -face? Do you really need a face-to-face? -face? Do they need to feel the product before they, convince, they get convinced to buy? What are the channels that are being used? Consideration factors? Occasion? Is there any particular occasion only they will buy your products? For example, the mask now, right? Habits? What are their habits in life that could actually allow this product to come into their habits as well, into their repertoire? So these are basically the three pillars. Now, just to give you a bit of funneling, why is these three pillars important? So demographics is still very broad. You still have many million of people. Psychographics, you become very, very clear, right? So these are the example, right? Psychographics, I want a healthy lifestyle. This person watch Netflix, you know, always find fulfillment in a career. She's a career lady. She value times with small group of friends. You know, it, it describes a bit more that about her. That is psychographics. And then you have behavior. Behavior will be something like, you know, she loves the discount. She loves 11.11 sales. She, she always read all the reviews before deciding what brand to buy. She follows a friend's recommendation. What, one of the key criteria for her to buy anything is effectiveness of the product, convenience, price, quality. She often follows celebrity XXX on Instagram for the latest fashion. Now, this part is quite challenging to find out until you get to speak to your consumers. So you need to actually ask them, what do you like? 
What do you don't like? What do you watch on Facebook? Who do you follow? You have to ask a lot of questions to know the depth of this person, right? <clears throat> and that basically puts you into a very good position of who you want to talk to. You are a lot clearer now who are these people and why they would be interested to buy your product, right? Now, um, when you know this target audience, this is also still very general. So what? So what if you know them? What exactly you are trying to do for them? That is where you need to understand your insight. Whatever product that you are selling here, identify your key insight. Now, what is insight? This is actually a very popular term. Huh? If you see any new products in the market, whether it's FMB or technology or mobile phone, every new features, new product comes with an insight. An insight can be defined as two areas. One is something which is a gap. We call it a gap between what is aspirational and what we have right now. So it's very aspiration focused. Now, majority of the insights are actually more on tension and struggle focus, which means I have a problem. That's why your product comes in to solve my problem. Almost 99%, with exception of Apple, are actually very focused on tension and struggle, which means solving a problem. Huh? And basically, this insight Actually, this is, when you try to get this insight, you, couldn't, you can't see as superficial value. Like if I just get to know you, or I just have a very casual conversation with you, I won't be able to know exactly what are, your, what are the key insights. I need to do a lot of observation on how you behave. So I'm just giving you a few examples. Um, one example is, uh, do you notice about how Colgate do their advertisement? Do you realize they always show how you need to squeeze a full toothpaste onto your toothbrush? And it's like this long. But the true fact is actually you don't need to put so much of toothpaste, you know. The truth is that. But why? Why do they want to do it? Because they feel that the consumer feel is cleaner when there's more foam. Of course, from the brand perspective, the more toothpaste you use, the more sales for me. So win-win situation, right? So sometimes insights could also help to drive your business consumption if you are able to spot it. Now, let's look at a good example of Bluetooth. Can someone here tell me what is the insight of this Bluetooth earphone? Anyone? By the way, I have prizes for the top three most participative person, okay? Anyone? Or I randomly choose, huh? What do you think is the insight? Um, for the Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth uh, earphone. Yeah. What, what's the issue? What's the problem? What, what's the insight of ha having this product? Talking while driving. Talking while driving. Okay, talking while driving. But before this thing, everyone can do talking while driving. What's the problem? Multitasking things. But, okay, so your mom is asking, you are driving and you need to talk. Yes. Normally, people will use the wire thing, it's very inconvenient. Yes. That is the insight. The wires that you have to install on your phone to your ears is so inconvenient, especially when you are on the move. Simple, right? That's the insight. So, what's the product? Benefit? Now we have a Bluetooth earphone that you do not have any more dangling warriors issue. That itself. So insight is problem. It's always that problem. Now, who can tell me what is the insight behind this uh, Nes Nespresso. Nespresso? Who can tell me? Insight. Convenient. Convenience. But you've got Nescafe go at home, right? Or normal Nescafe. Why, what is, why do they want to invent this? to feel like gourmet coffee but at a very short time. Right. Right. So in the past, you are right. This consumer wants to wants to experience gourmet coffee but in the comfort of the home. That is the concept why Nespresso is born. 
Because back then, if you want to have good coffee, you have to drive out to go to a cafe. But now you don't need to. You can, in the comfort of your home, you can have a gourmet coffee, a latte or a cappuccino and all. So that is actually the inside. How about iPhone? What do you think is the ins insight for this? Let's go to you. <laughs> the, the reasons for uh, producing an iPhone? Um, yeah, it's a keyboard, right? So I think it was the first device to get rid of the keyboard. The person, uh, yeah, or what the key driver was for, I don't know, you know, from an iPod. I so there's a lot of history on that, right? Now you notice this, this iPhone is not really solving a specific problem actually because everyone is so happy with their Nokia with their little keys, isn't it? Then why, are, why, why does this become such a big thing or a big hit in the market? What's the keyword here? Yeah, but what's about the brand? What, what, when you have an iPhone, what do you feel? Status. Status is aspirational. Remember, a lot of the big brands out there, they don't play functional benefit anymore. I have this ingredient. No, they go beyond. They go status. They go aspiration. So for you to have an iPhone at that time versus the rest of all the 99% are having Nokia, you stood up. You look technologically more at once. You look more sexy, you know, in a professional setting with a more advanced phone. It's not bulky, it's slim. Yeah? So these are basically insights. Now, exercise for you guys. Okay, before we do the exercise, we will just quickly cover a couple more insights. So for skincare, Brand. This could be something that they share. I find myself less popular compared to my friends who have fairer complexion. My skin tone is dark, it gets worse when I expose under the sun. So that is how this skincare brand, which is focusing on pigmentation, anti-pigmentation, come up with this insight statement. And then you have basically a milk product. What is the insight behind this new milk product with fortification? I'm worried my child have lack of protein and other nutrition for their growth. I hope they'll be strong, healthy, happy growing up and not get sick so often. So this could be also the insight of a nutritious uh, beverage. Then there is this uh, art school. Very interesting, an art school. Huh? Also have to think about what is the insight to attract more kids, especially special kids. They're focusing on special kids. So as the mom, it says, I'm frustrated that my special kid is so shy and anxious to express herself. I don't know how to make it easier and better for him or her to express himself. So this is basically insight. Insight starts with the word I, which means your consumer point of view. So very important when you identify insights, always put yourself into their shoes. It's not about your brand, about your business, no one cares about it. It's really about them. Okay. Now, if you notice, this is just an example which I will not go through, but I'm just saying this is how the whole TA profile comes up with. If you can identify something like that for your target audience, it will be fantastic. You have a very clear idea what kind of talent to feature if you want to use it. What kind of celebrity or, in, or like even a cheaper influencer that look alike to, to consider? You know how to actually buy Facebook ads because you know which channel and interest they actually goes to. If you want to go on ground, you also know exactly which channel to go. Are they on shopping malls? Do they go to park? Are they into marathons? This TA profile helps you to identify that. Okay? And it will be great if you can do it on your own. Due to time factor, we are not going to go through all these details. Yeah. So, just now you scan your QR code. I'll give you a very short time for you to write your insights 
in the form or if you don't have that form, just write onto your own Google Notes for your product. What is the, what is the problem statement? I'll give you one minute and then I would like some of you to come and share. Those that finish, just raise your hands. We are here to learn from each other today. It's not just about me, so please be involved. Okay, who is that? <laughs> okay, if you have a laundry shop, okay, operating by itself, um, how, how should I write this? So you already have a laundry shop operating. <clears throat> so yours is basically a, more like a service, yeah? And basically there is an element of um, people who wants to use your laundry shop rather than another one. It's, it's that kind of uh, differentiation that you want to look at. So it's more like the inside of why, why do they need to choose your laundry? You, you get what I mean? Um, so it's a service. Uh, there are a lot of self services. So the question is, so what exactly is something, what is it that you are going to offer? So for example, some convenience store, they actually offer people to have a place to mum up, you know, sit down and chat. It become a social place. It's more than a petrol station kiosk. You know, it, it, it brings more value, that kind of a way of looking at it. Or you can also bring products in that allow them to spend time happily while they are waiting for their laundry to be washed. So you have to think about that, like what is the inside? Maybe the inside will be like, I feel bored when I sit here and wait for 30 minutes for the laundry to be done. I don't know. It, so then, then you want to think about what value you want to add on, onto your laundry. Who has finished? Okay, let's quickly go to the back and tell me anyone here who has done their value. Yes. Frustrated consumers uh, who are looking for hot beverage, which is uh, sugar-free, caffeine-free and calming, so that they can have a good night's sleep. Your product is uh, it's actually uh, caffeine free tea. Caffeine free tea. Yes. Caffeine free tea. Caffeine free tea. Okay, so the inside is the whole idea is I wanted to oh, this. So your inside statement, if you start with the word I, sometimes they might not be thinking about I and looking for this and this and this. You think you are selling to them, so you think that I'm looking for this. Right? But for the way they describe this statement, it's always a problem. So it's like, I find it hard to stay awake all the time. Or I find that I don't like to have, co I love coffee, but I have problem with caffeine. I wish there are products that are caffeine free. Who saw? Then that's where your product comes in. Okay? What else? Any value? Any insight that been written? Anyone here? Okay, so you go. I'm selling flower herbs tea. Um, my insight, I dislike drinking plain water, but a cup of flower herbs tea can bring benefit to me and the tea flavor encourage me to take more water. Okay, so that is basically her insight on uh, flower herbal tea. Okay. 
Now, my question is, what, what does this flower herbal tea do to you when you drink it? Make your? Complex. Yes, my skin complex better. Okay, so, so the thing is that, um, so if you think about this herbal stuff, right, herbal, herbal drinks in general, um, they are quite focused on certain specific area and they go all up to it. So one is called the slimming tea, it can be the, your skin complexion, yeah, or it can be your whatever uh, uh, prevent heatiness in you. So there is a lot of angles, a lot in terms of the problems that you can try to solve. So the thing is that, but for anyone to drink plain water is is common. But maybe you're saying that, okay, I want something that is more flavorful than just plain water, but at the same time can bring a bit more benefit to my overall uh, well-being physically. Is there such a product and it's affordable? I don't know. So you could actually marry all, that, all of that together. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we move on to the next one. Know your competitors. So here, the very simple, the most simple way of uh, looking at the competitor mapping is basically based on these two axes, right? It's because it's e-commerce uh, driven, so price seems to always be a key axis, a key factor. But the other factor can be anything, yeah? It can be quality, but quality is defined in a lot of areas, which I'll, I'll explain later. Now, know your strength and weaknesses. Strength means what you offer, others don't. Weakness is what others offer, but you don't, right? It's completely reversed. So if you are selling, say even your laundry shop, that is a good way, right? Yeah, you're not selling it, but sorry, but you're doing this laundry shop service. You have to also understand the few laundries near your same neighborhood. What do they have? I don't have. What I have, they don't have. You need to map that out. You need to go and literally visit them or try or buy their products to try to understand that. Because you know where you stand. And you, when you know where you stand, you know why your consumers are buying competitors and not your products. And you have to think of then, what is the strategy to convert them? What kind of positioning can I do to make them convinced that I'm better than them? So, knowing your competitors in this diagram, uh, giving you a few examples, but let's look into the axis, price. Now, when you do price segmentation, you need to split it not just towards uh, expensive and cheap. I know we always say that in the Malay language, murah, murah, murah you know? But in, in the idea of your category, right, in almost every category, your price tiers are just so big. You have people who are million A's who only buy the most super premium price products ever. And you have the ones that are really so poor that they will buy anything that is value or as close to a ringgit, for example. So price segmentation, you need to kind of split it out in terms of super premium, premium, medium, affordable, and super cheap. Then you know where, where, you, where is your product standing now? Even for your laundry shop, right? Your service, how much do they have to pay? Where do you stand? If you want to deliver a higher price, you need to probably provide aircon in your laundry shop, right? <laughs> or even a PlayStation for them to play. I don't know. But it goes with what you offer to justify the price. Then you have quality. So remember the axis on quality? You could define the quality to something that is more concrete, depending on what category of you are in. It can be product efficiency. It can be durability, how long it lasts. It could also be driven by warranty, if it's so important. And money, uh, materials. What kind of material, quality of materials? Is it endorsement, technology, taste? So this is very abstract, but let's go into some example. So say chocolates, you have the quality and you have the price, right? So if you are Cadbury, maybe I should not share this, but <laughs> if you're Cadbury, what do you think is the strength of Cadbury here? Anyone? Anyone can spot something or not? Yes. Cadbury is the benchmark. Cadbury is the benchmark for local chocolate brands. You realize that? Because they are the Cadbury is scoring better than Kit Kat, than M&Ms, which are like locally produced, right? 
So, but what is the weakness? What is the weakness? It make you energetic. Make you energetic. All chocolates do that. <laughs> okay, so these are a couple of strength and weakness that I have put in. Um, Cadbury is still very known for its classic dairy chocolate, right? It's still very classic, the plain milk chocolate. It is reasonable quality and price. It's also considered better quality as a local product. Uh, it's very um, innovative. You have Cadbury in ice cream and other formats. You, and it's a bit more children-centric. So I also see that as a strength because you know all children taking Cadbury chocolates is actually a good strong, a strong point. Weakness. Um, weakness is that because it's quite reasonable, it's also non-premium. So if you launch a new Cadbury product and you want to sell like 50% higher, no one wants to buy because you cannot comment that from the consumers. It's non-premium, full stop. And then this is also, the other weakness is it may seem as an average chocolate taste compared to imported. That's why Lindt and Ferrero Rocher is still the more expensive brand with more premium taste, at least the perception of consumers' mind. Now, if you think about, if this world, there is no imported brands, no Ferrara, no Lindt, no all these big brands, important brands, do you think Cadbury will still sit where it is today? It won't. Because you see, in consumers' mind, it's all about perception. Right? You have something better, even if you are so good, people would think that you are average. Because something better came into my mind now. So it's always relative, you have to remember that. Playing a branding game is always relative. That's the reason why you need to know your competitors. You have to know yourself, what are your strengths and weakness. Next one, automobile. This is very famous chart. High price, low price, low performance, high performance, right? So if you are a Honda, what do you think is the strength? Someone at the back, who can answer? What is the strength of a Honda? Right? Japanese brand. For those who are looking for the Eastern product, I mean, East product. Toyota also Japanese brand. <laughs> what else? What do you think is the strength of Honda? Uh, reliability, but with a bit of style. Reliability, but with a, some style. Okay. Mars and BMW are also quite reliable and got style. What else? What is the key strength of Honda? What? Power to move. That is the tagline. Nothing to do with it. What? Performance and affordable. Afford okay, so performance is there, but also affordable. Right? So that is actually one strength. What is the weakness? Anyone? What is the weakness of Honda relative to other brands? Is there any weakness? That one is what is something that is still high maintenance? High maintenance. Yeah, high maintenance. High maintenance. Okay. So maybe I'll just put it this way. Uh, reliability across generations. Do you realize Honda has been driven by your grandmother days? <laughs> right? That is also a strength. You have a heritage to be told. So if you have any like F and B dishes or business that has spanned across hundred years, please shout that is your strength. Consistent performance, hmm? that is also one thing. High trade-in value, no one noticed that Honda, Toyota, these are high trade-in value cars. It's also your strength. Huge service center network, you don't need to think about finding a garage or whatever, right? It's all available easily. What is the weakness? Expensive cars. Yeah, because everything is imported perhaps, but maybe not the case now. New models are less affordable. Actually, this is not really for Honda, it's more like Mazda. <laughs> but, but you get what I mean? In the sense of identifying your strength and weakness, you can really think a few, right? But actually, there's a lot. You have to dig very deep. So for every product that you are selling, dig very deep what are your strength and weakness. And then map out. Sports shoe. Okay, this is another one. Between fashionable and non-fashionable, low comfort, high comfort. So, if you are a uh, Nike, okay, what is your strength? Let's find some males who are sporty with you. Thank you for noticing, yeah. Nike. <laughs> um, of course, the branding itself, you know, people always like just do it, you know, it's like straightforward and sporty youth and uh, quality. 
Sporty and quality, okay. What is the other strength about Nike? Stylish. Stylish. So fashion. Fashion is there already. What? But what makes it so fashionable? What do you think is so fashionable? Celebrity. Okay. Celebrity. Celebrity are using Nike and they're showing it off, right? What is the weakness of Nike? Oh, this is going to be challenging. What's the weakness of a big brand like Nike? Compared to others, it's very expensive. Right. So, sometimes you can, it depends, you have sports celebrity endorsement, you have fashion icon leader, you have premium materials. These are your key strengths for the brand. Weakness. It may be a little bit more male skilled. That was more in the past. Now they become more balanced in your marketing. But you notice Nike in the past is very male skilled. It's always about the men in sports. Um, there could be a bit of a perception of less comfort, but this is in relative to other brands that really talks a lot more about the insole. Whereas uh, Nike talk a lot about the overall shoe design as a fashion, right? So again, this is basically just no right or wrong, it's just basically what you perceive out of it. So, activity. Take one minute. Identify your current product strengths and weaknesses. Okay, and then identify the two key parameters that you want to compare yourself with all your other competitors, right? So, when I say key parameters, it can be price and quality. It can be price and performance. It can be whatever. So just identify, but you don't need to map, because you cannot map this in Google, <laughs> Google form. But you just need to identify that. Name a few strengths, name a few weaknesses. I give you one minute. Um, very quickly, anyone wants to share? Remember, I'm going to select three most participative 
present here for a, a very good price here. Who would like to share? Yes. Okay. Um, this category is more to a gadget, uh, IT product. So the product that I wanted to map out is actually my company. Uh, my, not say my company, like company I work for, uh, own brand, which is called John. Okay, it's an affordable one. Uh, so I just break down the key parameters first. So it's between performance and price. So for uh, I'm gonna compare this brand Joy with two other brands. One is Surface, Microsoft Surface, and one more is Apple. Okay. So for the parameter, uh, these are the two: performance and price. So for Joy. The parameter is low performance but affordable price. Okay. This parameter you mentioned, but more on the strength and fitness. Oh. What is strong about joy? Okay, uh, affordable. Okay, uh, suitable for all ages, uh, whether young or old. Okay, and then it's uh, user friendly because it's using Windows interface. Yeah. So that's the strength. For the weaknesses, would be the quality, the performance. Because due to its affordable price tag, it's more towards uh, uh, light usage, so it's more to uh, light performance. So that's the strength of weaknesses. Alright, uh, um, so you heard that, right? Now, gadgets, you will find that there's so many competitions because a lot of Me Too products are pretty similar. Now, very careful, you have to be very careful about what you put as strength because Strength is also relative perception. It's like, if now you're saying that you are quality products, hey, Apple is also very quality, Microsoft is also very quality. What do you mean by that? So you need to know that who you're also competing against. For a lot of small businesses, seriously, don't think about competing with too big of a brand. You, in consumer mind, you're not even there, you know? You want to compete with whoever that you saw parked next to you on e-commerce. Seriously, because that is where the comparison happened. Your price, your price, your product image, your product image, that's it. You always try to focus on your neighbors who you are competing. Don't go with too far-fetched brands because it's a completely very different game altogether. People would invest millions, you only invest hundreds. <laughs> it's a big difference. Huh? So be very careful about who you're trying to benchmark. The thing is, if you want to play the premium game, make sure your image is looks premium. You want to play affordable game, make sure that you also have uh, a lot of shout-outs on your quality and your features of your product. So people feel like, wow, I'm paying only this much and I can get so many in return. That is value. So all who play affordability needs to focus on value. You have, if you buy this product, you're going to get these 10 benefits, right? If you buy, if you use this, you're going to see improvement in two weeks, right? So focus on values uh, that you can really generate for small businesses especially. Okay, next. We have done the understanding. Now let's move into define. This is going to be interesting because you have to think now as your boss. Just now you try to understand more on the consumer set. Now it's about your brand. Let's go into brand persona. So, what is brand persona? It's actually a collection of personality traits. Yeah? Uh, it can be your traits, your attitudes, your values. Um, and your brand actually showcases this personality regularly with your target audience. You just don't notice it, but actually it does happen. So, a brand persona can also be a person, it can also be a cartoon character or a mascot. Yeah? A good brand persona is one that you can almost visualize as a real human being. So for example, if I were just to give, uh, just play this very simple game, huh? Apple, man or woman? If you put Apple, you make, you turn Apple brand into a human being, man or woman? Man. man. Wow, see? Why man? Huh? Not woman. Okay, interesting. Okay, man. How old is this man? 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s? 30s. How old? 30s. Mid-30s. Mid-30s? 
mid thirties. No one say fifties, huh? Okay, fine. So mid thirties man, is he? What kind of personality he has? Is he sophisticated? Is he a manager or executive? Let's talk about occupation. Is he a manager or executive? Manager. Manager. Okay. Earns earns quite well income, right? Manager. Okay. Do you think he has a family? He has a family. Yes. Wow. See. Right, that's brand persona for you, man. You can articulate this brand to a person, almost, that is brand persona. And why do you want to do that? It's because you, you can relate. You want your target audience to be able to relate to you. Right? So again, understanding your consumers, you know, the bulk of it, is it more male focus, more female focus? If you know this kind of demographics, it helps you to identify what kind of talent and images you want to put in your posters. So if I'm going to do an Apple ad, I won't put a 15-year-old female in the ad, right? I will put a manager who seems to be very successful in the work setting, who holds an iPhone and also have a MacBook in, the, in his workstation. I will show that kind of image. That, to represent Apple, because that's how you all can relate to it. You are Apple users, as I want you to relate to it. So that is brand persona. So in the brand persona framework, there are five main personification. This is the five most popular ones that most brands try to be part in one of it. But the thing is, it's not fixed, just so you know, it's just a framework so that it's easy. Usually when you are insincere, you are more like you, have, you carry personalities like down to earth, honest, wholesome, cheerful. If you are into excitement, then you are more into daring, spirited, imaginative, up to date. Competence will be reliable, intelligent, successful, hardworking. Remember, there's a case study in the next slide. Sophistication, upper class, charming, glamorous, feminine, roughness, outdoor, tough, masculine, western. So all these five persona is very, very different. Now let's play a case study. First line, Tiffany, Co, Rolex, Gucci, Apple. What do you think? Sophistication. Sophistication, right. How about the second line? Ruggedness, okay. How about Disney, Hallmark, Amazon, Cadbury? Excitement. Excitement. Why, why do you feel that it's exciting? Disney. <laughs> Disney. Are, you sure it's exciting? Are you sure it's exciting? Disney, Hallmark, Amazon, Cadbury. Excitement? Hallmark is the movie that... I think it's more like excitement to me. Okay. Okay, maybe I should reverse it. Huh? <laughs> Tesla, Red Bull, Coke, and Nike. Red Bull is excitement. Red Bull is excitement. Why do you say that? Uh, because there is uh, in sport, Red Bull or always sponsor. And Disney, Hallmark, and all is how? <laughs> all the one, uh, very sure. Uh? Why, why, why do you say sincerity? Yeah, very wholesome, very family values. Yes, yeah, sincerity always kind of linked to wholesomeness, family values. So you see Hallmark, Disney, Cadbury, it's very family, right? Very children, very parents and everything. Volvo, Google, Intel, Microsoft? That's only the last one. You cannot, cannot make a wrong guess, right? What is it? Competence. So, confidence is linked to what? Something that is more intelligent, successful, managers. It's like Apple, right? A bit like that, but it's a bit different here. So, look at these lines of different brands. In the consumer's mind, it actually occupies a persona. So, when you think about, so, like I said, when people look at Disney, they will think about family because it's, about, it's a sincere persona. It is really down to earth, it's humble, it's friendly. Right? You look at Red Bull, it's always exciting. You know, you want to give, but it's also an energy product, right? So it's all about giving you energy, create excitement in life. So your product, your brand should go hand in hand, right? 
And you want people to remember and relate to that. Now, what brand persona does is it evokes impression. So, like I said, how you are being remembered as a product, no one will ever remember your product. But if you communicate to me that evokes my emotions, then I remember your brand. Okay? So how you talk, the words you use, how you express yourself, what you like, what you dislike, are you a person with a sense of humor? How do you really sound like? All these are in your communication materials to your consumers. You have to be very conscious how you do it. So if you want to be very casual, you can use a lot of this Malay lingo. Ole la, jola. Yes, then you become more like a neighborhood person. But if you're a luxury brand, you never use this kind of term. You become very proper. You use perhaps some very big terms as well. Right? So be careful about how you express yourself as a brand. Your social media especially, your website, the font you use, the color you use, all speaks about your personality. So, key activity right now, define, just kind of like for the fun of it, not to say it's fixated, try to think about the three to five personality that you think your brand carries. And how you think about that is also in reference of your target audience. What kind of personality are they like? And maybe if your brand is like this, it will make them more appeal to you. So one minute, three to five personalities. Just choose some from here or you can think of another one, just put it in. It will be exercise for your brand. Remember, there are prizes for the most participative pe uh, people. Those who are not writing, I assume you are done. You are done? You want to share? <laughs> want to share? Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Ralph. I'm a trainer in harassment and bullying. And for me, my best persona will be fearless, which is I take the daring step to do it, courageous, decisive, and also efficient. Sorry, what is the brand? This product you are doing? I'm doing trading in bullying. Okay, so he runs a training on building investment. It's not really a, exactly a product, but it's more like a service. But yes, bullying and investment, not investment. Ah, oh, okay, okay. So in the sense of of building a persona to it, sometimes it can be very challenging if you're in a service line. Um, so how the brand persona image comes up in the service line especially is very much driven by customer service actually. So example, if I know you as the owner of the laundry shop and I always bump into you at your laundry shop, I will, and I start talking to you and you are doing a very good service to, to me, you tell me what to do, you give me like additional discount sometimes, then I will perceive your brand as the, and map it to your personality. Like, oh, she's a very friendly girl. Or she's a very caring person. It could also be linked to the individual or for your brand persona as well. There's no right or wrong. <clears throat> Anyone else want to share? Hello, everyone. So my brand persona is cheerful, fearless, hardworking, patient, and loving. So, you sell frozen food product. Your first personality is what? Cheerful. Why? Why cheerful for your? Why choose cheerful? It's frozen food, huh, by the way. It's frozen already. <laughs> Sometimes it's like you are literally you are quite a cheerful person. You you want to so sometimes most often we we as the owner we want to bring our values and personality to the brand because we have to relate to the brand first or not how to sell to other people right. So on the underlying fundamental you always need to have 
a couple of personality and values that you are aligned with the brand. So you want to bring it to that. Sometimes it could also be contradicting. So example, if I'm a very serious person, I need something that's more fun in life. So I'm, I wanted to manage a brand and make this brand more fun so that it can kind of like balance my life a bit more because I'm too serious, I don't, I don't like to have fun. It could also be very contradicting. So as an individual, there's no right or wrong. That's the beautiful part about branding because you are the one who decide what persona you want to create. The only thing you just need to remember is who you're talking to. The one who talks to who you want as a consumer, as a customer, you need to make sure they are appealed to what I, the way you're talking. That is the important part. Yeah? Okay, let's move on. Let's go into benefits. Identify your product benefits. Now, this is called the benefit ladder. We always start with the word functional benefit, which means what do I get from it? What does it do to me? Simple, right? So when you buy a product, this functional benefit always linked to your insight. So remember insight is not the problem statement that you mentioned. I, what, what, what. Then this functional benefit comes in. This brand X helps you to build it up. This is what the functional benefit is. And when you actually say something like, say example, if I have a product that can gives you a lot of nutrition, this uh, berry string, 10 different nutrition, vitamins and minerals. Then you'll be asking, why do I need to trust you? So I need to convince you by telling you the reasons to believe. The reasons to believe is actually a marketing term, very famously known, uh, to basically back up whatever you are trying to say. So it's like, show me proof. I'm giving you a proof why I'm saying my benefit is so good. So why do I believe it? There's something that you need to articulate in terms of reason to believe. And very often, it's always back to your product characteristics. So for example, the, the, when Samsung came with a, with a different screen, you know the screen is curved screen? That's what they say. My reason to believe for this new Samsung model is that it has curved screen. Curved screen. The rest of the brands doesn't have. Or I have a pen now, the rest of the brand doesn't have. So the reason to believe that this is a unique, special model is because of that, right? Emotional benefit, how does your product make someone feel? So this is something that you wanted to identify. Give you some examples. Let's start off with case study. Milo, what is the functional benefit of Milo? Please tell me. Sweetness. Sweetness, ah, this is what you want as a benefit of my daughter. Probably she's the only one. So you drink Milo because of energy. What else? What is the functional benefit? Nutrition. Okay. So it's energy and nutrition. That is your functional benefit. Okay. What is the reason to believe? Why do I need to believe Milo can give me energy? Why? But why? 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 Why do I need to trust that Milo has can give me energy? If not. Why do I need to believe that? Sorry? Yeah, drink my love. But still, it doesn't make me believe that. It doesn't, it, it doesn't give me a concrete... I want proof. Tell me why energy, why you can give me energy and nutrition. Tell me. What else? School days. School days. Ah, it's always Okay, so I realize all of you never really look at the Milo packaging, right? <laughs> do you so, do you see this small thing? Actually, this is not the latest Milo Malaysia packaging, but there is this thing called Actigen E. Do you know there's an Actigen E on the Milo packaging? It's like it's always on the front of the packaging, and basically it says Actigen E gives you the energy. That is the reason to believe. And why do you believe that it's more nutritious? Because on the packaging it says 10 vitamins and minerals, which is somewhere around here. Maybe 6 or 8, I can't remember. But it's written down there. So you notice they are very clear on giving you the reason to believe. 
that this is a good energy drink. If not, it will not be live right. It can be celebrating, can be sports, can be school days, so on. It's not concrete until you put it onto your product. So reasons to believe is important. What is the emotional benefit of drinking energy drink? For a mom, if you are a kid, your kids drink it and become energetic, what does it what do, what does it make, make you feel? Who are moms here? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So what do you feel emotionally when you I refuse to give my children. Oh, this one is an exceptional case. <laughs> okay. How does uh, how does a mom feel when you when you actually see that your child is healthy and energy energetic? Happy. You feel happy. Less. Less. Okay, put it into more context. Like, so if your son is energetic, he plays a lot of sports, and then he joins a lot of competition, he wins a lot of awards. Satisfaction. Satisfaction and then what else? Proud. Proud. Right. Okay. Okay, Milo. Functional benefit, it gives my kids energy he needs to stay active during and after school. Very clear, right? Very short and simple. What is the reason to believe? Because there is actigen E. That's why the reason to believe this benefit is actigen E. It has high source of protein, mix of good vitamins and minerals. This is the reason to believe. What is the emotional benefit it delivers? I'm a proud mom because my child feels like a champion. That's why you notice my law ads are very focused on champion, right? They don't really talk about activity actually. They don't even talk much about that anymore. Okay, study SK2. Functional benefit. What does SK2? Who uses SK2 here? No one ah? Okay. No, no. Oh your mom. Okay, can ah? Your mom also can. So why your mom use SK2? White, pretty, confident, okay. Skin whitening. Skin whitening, ah, okay, so it's whitening, ah. functional benefit. That's anti aging. Anti aging, okay, right, good. So it's funny, all the men are answering this. <laughs> I think they are secretly using it. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> what is the reason to believe that it can make you white, anti aging, and all these positive statements? Why? Why? Terra. Terra. Is it again bad answer this? It's either that it's either that advertising gone wrong <laughs> or it's extremely powerful till the spouse knows about it. What is the emotional benefit of this brand? Makes you what? What do you feel when you use SP2 after a while? What do you feel? Can you answer also? <laughs> um, how do you say? Why don't you ask it? Beautiful, confident, confident. confident. beautiful, elegant. elegant. Okay. Bingo, man. All of you get it right. Makes my skin whiter, softer, and supple. Functional benefit. Why is the reason to believe? Because it contains pitera. Pitera is an active compound to generate cells. What is the emotional benefit? I can do what I want and fulfill my dreams and passion. Because I look good. I can do what I want. I'm confident. I also can be very elegant. Right, last one. Case study. Heinz. This one quite easy. La. But it's also quite tricky. Huh? Functional benefit. What's the benefit of having a tomato ketchup? This is quite interesting, isn't it? Hey, this is a good exercise because sometimes your products are very also basic. Like, so hard to find the benefit, right? But yeah, this is a good exercise. Why this tomato ketchup? Acid Not negative, lah, something more positive. What's the functional benefit? Enhanced flavor, yes. So, what's the reason to believe? Why do you think this is a good product? Yeah. Yeah, pure tomatoes. Pure tomatoes. Okay. So emotionally, when you take Heinz ketchup, how do you feel after that? If your whole family eating? Happy. Happy. Very simple. This is the most simple case ever. 
Okay. Functional benefit. They try to go into the line of making my food taste extraordinary. So of course it can taste make the food taste good, but good is not special, right? It's not unique. They go with the word extraordinary so that this product can go into the many different dishes all over the world. It regardless of what kind of local or western cuisine or whatever cuisine you are. Reason to believe is not if someone said pure tomatoes, right? Correct, but if it's more like homegrown tomatoes, no artificial flavoring. So it gives you reason to believe that this is actually good. I'm proud to serve delicious food for my family. This is the emotional benefit. Whoever who buys this is supposed to feel proud because they're bringing good stuff to the kitchen or to the dining table. Right, so can you, can you get an idea of this uh, benefit ladder? And you actually can apply this benefit ladder to your product as well. So next exercise, please start to write your functional benefit, your reasons to believe, and your emotional benefit. Short and simple, huh? not too lengthy. So what distinguishes you in terms of that? So you want to be even more specific to say that, okay, I'm able to solve this, uh, solve any problems in three, in one month. Or I'm able to, I don't know, something that's a bit more specific that people feel that, oh, this is something interesting about your what you offer. Reason to believe, years of experience, yes, very good. Uh, successful case studies, also very good. But be specific, because everyone also can say the same thing, right? So you wanted to go like, just to believe, I have 10 years of consulting experience. And I have 10 event multinational companies that I've worked for paid before. So that is a reason to believe. You become, it actually enhances the problem solving benefit that you're seeing. And emotional benefit is of course the feeling of success or something like that, yeah, that's fine. 
Okay, let's move on. Due to time, uh, we might actually pass a bit over 4 p.m. So I hope everyone is okay, but we are learning, right? So we are cool. Now let's move on to value proposition. <clears throat> so you know all your benefits already, right? Let's look at how would these other brands communicate their benefits. So, question up there. Who, what do you think is the benefit or so-called the value proposition of A, B, and B? Anyone? Affordable accommodation. Okay, but I also can find affordable accommodation in hostels and everything. So why A and B? Local experience. Local experience. Yes, there is a local experience. What else? Feels like home. Feels like home. Same. Okay. So if you look at value proposition of Airbnb, to have a truly local experience when you travel and feel belong. Bingo, right? Now, amazing work that they have done that you could actually connect it so easily. You can articulate the answer so easily. That is something you need to develop for your brand. IKEA, what is the value or proposition of IKEA? Anyone? Home experience. Home experience, okay. What else? What does IKEA sell? Affordable. 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 Affordable one. Uh, affordable uh, furnitures. Furnitures. Okay. Right. Yes. Self installation. Self installation. That one not. <laughs> I rather someone install for me actually than I install myself. <laughs> but anyway, okay. To provide well designed functional home furnishing at affordable price. So it's quite close. It's not someone said something about home furnishing. Someone said affordable. It's exactly like that. But they added in this thing called well-designed, functional. Means design is good and it's very practical for you to use. And on top of it, affordable. Right? So three key benefits in one statement. That's why IKEA is so successful today, isn't it? Next brand. Facebook. What's the value of having Facebook? <laughs> Tell me. Yeah. Yeah. Taking care of your connection. Connect, connect, connect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, connection, uh, meaning that connect to uh, everyone. Yes, connection. What else do you do on Facebook? Why, why Facebook? <laughs> Sharing. Hi, okay. Two keywords are up here. To give people the power to share and make the world more open and connected. Very clear value proposition, isn't it? Right? Exactly. If you can articulate it, means they have done it well. Next one. This one everyone should know. Google. What's the value of having Google in our life? It's just searching. Searching. What else? Google knows everything. <laughs> Google knows everything. Information, basically. Right? So. So the, the value here is to make world's information universally accessible and useful for people. So do you see how they write the value proposition? It's so clear, right? But for you individually, you will say in, in, in snippets of words, right? In snippets of words. But you piece everything together, that's what it means. That is your value proposition. So, value proposition is a bit like a mission statement. You have to be kind of clear what is it that you're doing and why you are doing it. So, whether you are doing consulting or you're doing a frozen food or a laundry shop, you need to be very clear what, why do you want to do this? You know, if you don't do it, what happens? Could it be something else that you can do? Give you a sense of purpose and direction and they explain why your business exists and how. So, value proposition, if you look back at just now, what all these big brands have done, they leave, they have a certain purpose. And it's something that all of you could connect and relate and use it. You want to do the same for your target audience. So um, today I will skip this because uh, we are running short of time. This is something that you could do later. But the idea is for you to write your own value proposition as well. And the way I'm writing this is to use the word to. Just to make it easy, of course you can choose not to, but to make it easy. To what? 
there is an action to create, to help, to empower, to enable, to give, to make. Use that to help you to craft your value proposition. Then, when you do this to help who? Who is this person involved? Is it children? Is it mothers? Is it women? Is it men? Is it kids? I don't know. Who you want to talk to? Sometimes for Google and Facebook, it's across ages, so you don't, they don't put who, right? But if you have a specific product for mothers, for families, or whatever, then you can, you can specify who. To achieve what? So to help mothers to provide nutritious food to their children so that they can be grow, they, they can grow up healthy, for example. That could be another way. So this is a value proposition um, that you can write for your own business. And you should print out A3 size and put onto your shop or onto your mirror. So every day when you wake up, you look at this, you know what you're doing. What you're doing your business for. It's supposed to inspire you, right? If not, why do you want to waste your time to do it? Brand positioning. Now, brand. Every time, remember this thing, huh? When you hear the word brand, think about consumers. It's not you anymore. You are no longer in the picture. Think, put yourself in the shoes of consumers. So, just to give you a few examples on how, what type of positioning out there in the market. There are positioning that owns your category benefit. So, for example, the safest car brand in the world is Volvo, right? They own it. They own it and they are very consistent with it. So that is owning something in the category. In the automobile, they are safety is that it belongs to them. Position the product and the consumer. So it's like product together with the people, two in one. So a good one is Pepsi Generation. This is a very old Fontana line. They call it the Pepsi Generation. It's it's just this product, this brand, and you are the young generation who I want to appeal to. And it looks cool and sexy. If you are at 15 years old, you want to drink Pepsi. Because it's a Pepsi generation. It's just a posi positioning. Position how the company does business. So in Asia, use this word called now everyone can fly. Of course, it's not so cheap, now, but the perception is that how they do business is that they are trying to tell people, I'm very affordable. That's it. How I'm doing my business, I'm making it affordable for you. Now everyone can fly. That is how the tagline means. Position against the competition. This is the most classic one. So many mobile phones out there. How to compete? So Apple said, I think differently. If you own an Apple phone, you're also a bit more different than others. Like, so you realize the status is a bit different. You have a bit of different status. Okay, brand taglines help to in your positioning. Right? So if you look at Apple, think different, Nike, just do it, McDonald's, I'm loving it. So look at all the food brands, huh? it's always about taste, you notice? Coca-Cola is because it's a refreshment, you wanted to talk about the emotional happiness you get from drinking some a soft drink. L'Oreal is all about your value, you as a woman or man, you're worth it. Because the product is expensive, but you're worth it, you're worth by to, to have to enjoy such a great quality product. SK2, crystal clear skin. So again, the clarity of message, the creativity of phrasing it is important. Now, taglines will not make sense. It's just that it does basically enable your consumers to roughly know what you offer as well. So for small businesses, focus on what you're getting, what you're offering. So for example, if, uh, if this brand called uh, Signature Snack, they sell a lot of uh, almonds and cashew nuts. Then, and they're organic. So maybe they can go into this thing called organic snack, organic healthy snacking. That is a simple tagline, right? Three words. But you already get an idea. It's about snacking and it's healthy. And it's even healthier because it's organic. So again, think about taglines that can help your brands. Uh, create a tagline phrase. This one you can do on your own. I'm going to skip this. I suppose we cannot have any break of time, it's not on our side. So you guys are okay, we continue? Yes. Okay, great. So, the next one we're gonna move on to is some case studies. This is one of my favorite. Um, so if you look at the three banks, how are they gonna differentiate from each other? 
So if you know your competitors, right? Colors is one. The second thing is the shapes or the images that they use. So they might use a tiger because it symbolizes strength, power, leadership, right? Uh, CIMD use an arrow, you know, actually no one really noticed it's a real arrow, but it's actually an arrow. It's to show that it's fast forward. We are forward thinkers, we are forward bankers, we are innovative. Uh, RHB is actually Rashid Hossein, comes from a founder, but it actually is a very cute font, you realize? So it becomes more like a dynamic, vibrant, friendly, you can come to me easily. It's a different approach compared to Rainbow or CIMB. So no right or wrong, it's just how you want to create that personification. Next one, this will be interesting case study. So, so many, when it comes to food and when it comes to eating something, eating chicken, you see, each of these brands try to own a part of that subcategory of chicken. Chicken rice shop owns chicken with rice. It has to be with rice all the time. And then Nando's is with grilled chicken. It's, about, it's never fried. And KFC is always about fried chicken. It's never like others. So you notice how the brands play themselves really well. Now KFC is so established. When Nando's came into the picture or chicken rice shop comes into the picture, they know where to play because they know that they cannot win in fried chicken. They can never be better than KFC. So know where to play as well. If you think that now the category you are in is so competitive, then you need to rethink, is this really what you want to do or not? Or do you want to look at some other products or other business? Because there's only such a limit amount of um, mind frame for the consumers to remember the brands. So you need to make sure that if you want to come in, you come in and win in their, in their brain, right? Case study about product branding. Uh, so one thing good about all this successful case study is that you notice they are very consistent. So this is, uh, who can tell me what is number one brand? What's the name of the one? Kipling. Kipling, yes. Kipling is known for the cr crinkled nylon fabric and the monkey mascot for those who buy it. And there's a bit more younger audience targeted. How about number two? What brand is it? Burberry. Okay, not Blueberry, but Burberry. Yeah. So, famous for the check design, beige base with black, red and white lines. Number three, this one, who knows? Have to ask the male, maybe they know. Uh, this one for sure, don't know. Okay. Longchamp. Right, Longchamp. So Longchamp is very famous for the zipper and the flap. You know this? All their products are very much based on this design. So again, think a little bit about your identity. Whatever business you are in, you have to admit certain identity to it. Especially when you have a product. Next one. Uh, first one is Swatch. Okay, second one is Omega. So notice the difference? It appears to a different target audience. Swatch is more creative, play, progressive. Omega is more timeless, classic, and professional. Right? Okay, now we move on to communicate. So we have already understand your consumers and your competi competitors. Then you have defined your brand persona. You define what is the benefits that you're offering. What is their value and potentially your positioning to consumers. Now it's time to communicate. So here, we're going to go into some tips on product. There's a lot of tips here. There's tips on product packaging, as well as your marketing content. So let's go with packaging. May I ask uh, here in the room, how many people have products, like a real product that needs packaging? Just a show of hands. One, two, three, four. Wow, barely 10 people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the rest of you are doing what? Service. Uh? OK, I have to change this. Uh, so change my slides next time. Sorry. Okay, so packaging for those, for the benefit, I'll do, it, do this quickly. Um, for all those with products, look into quality certification, very important. It helps to establish your quality assurance to consumers. Second, um, these are just examples of the good case studies. So if you look here, Similac, you notice that they always put the key RTVs in the front. Right, so here is like basically Q plus 2FL. What the hell is 2FL? Who knows? 
people want to close it. Don't know, then you have to turn to the back and they tell you what is 2FL, what is Immunify, what is Q. So again, your product, try to put in your RTB because then you can con convince them. And then sometimes, if you could have an IP mark and ingredient, you see this IP, just put it in because people think that your, your, yours is quite unique and special. If not, how to stand out? Now I'm teaching you how to stand out, you know. So your product packaging, do something about all this. Learn from these big guys. Product segmented by age and color, depending on what category you have, what category you are in. If you are selling a specific product when it comes to food, sometimes it's good to tell them the location where you are sourced, because it feels more original, more authentic. So if you are doing frozen food, where the frozen food comes from? Made in Malaysia, okay, that might be difficult. <laughs> but yeah, uh, transparency on non-GMO claims, because it's also a big thing about health, people are moving into non-GMO. Brand story by inventor, so this is like someone who created this product, and it, the way he, he writes a simple story, how he actually developed this product as well. So founder story is also quite useful to put onto your product. And especially for servicing line, it's also important that you craft you craft up your your brand story because you are in this business for, for a reason, right? Consistent brand equity shown on product change, on product range. So if you look at Little Freddy, they have they play with colours, but they're very consistent with the brand, right? Little Freddy will always be the same. And then you always have a mascot carrying uh, whole grains as a key message, but could be different product, different ingredients. So, if you think about product extension, always be consistent. Colors and play focus, if you're targeting kids, this is a must. If not, it's very difficult just to convince mom to buy. Because you need the kids to eat. Um, in Japan, I think some of these Japan products are also pretty interesting. Uh, they, they actually put in very clear natural benefits. Sometimes they even put in taste parameters to show you how spicy or how sour it is. And there are icons highlight to basically tell you what they have and what they don't have. So these are just some tips for F and B. Ensure. I think most of you would have known Ensure brand. They are the most expensive powder in the country, but for good reason because they do have a lot of good ingredients inside. And you look at how they are quite strong in terms of the display, the brand color, uh, clear positioning, improved strength to enjoy moments that matter. Your RTB is with protein plus HMB. See? Positioning and RTB is on the product. Right? Okay, so that's all for packaging. We're going to zoom into e commerce uh, branding strategies. So, who are, who, may I have a show of hands? Who sells products on e commerce now? Okay, barely half of the of the room, but oh, probably half of the room. Okay, that's good. So, fact number one, you are not the only one. Congratulations. Welcome to the comp to the big, uh, so-called, we call it the, the sea, the blue sea. So, if you look into looking at your phones, you will realize one thing is that the product image are extremely small. There is a lot of clutter. There is a lot of repeat of the same products. And there is always a cheaper than new product. Fact number one, please recognize this. Second fact is that the first three seconds or the first three swipes matter. So what it means, you need to convince your buyer in the first three swipes, whether it's left, right or up, down, the first three swipes matters. So you need to make sure you highlight the most important benefit and RTB in the very beginning already. Because if you don't do that, that's it, you lose the sales opportunity. So, here are some reading e-com tips to, for you all to think about. Tier pricing strategy. Okay, when I thought about tier pricing strategy, this is being practiced by all the multinational companies. Always have one high, super high retail price. I know you won't be selling that price one, but just put, it's okay. Then every day low price, which means this is the price that every day, almost every day of the year, people can buy at that price. And then you have the third one, which is this really low, la, but a special promotion for price. So during 11, 11, 12, 12, then you can go another, 
I don't know, 10%, trying to get cheaper or whatever. So always have three pricing. We call it the three tier pricing. Second is to learn about pricing is always use the nine, number nine. Why? Because it's a magic number. People see nine, people think it's cheaper. It's psychological. So example, this one is 195. He, he, they can sell at 200, but why put 195? Because psychologically it seems cheaper, right? So nine is always a magic number. Try to put that as an everyday low price. Beautiful product photos. So I'm just going to give you a couple of good case studies. If you are selling uh, even frozen food, you need to make sure that although it's frozen, you don't show a frozen image of the prawns or fish. You want to show a very fresh looking one as well. Why? Because it matters. Beautiful product photos from Tiffany is a good guideline. Uh, it even have a color consistency. Not many companies can do that actually, unless your brand is just so focused. But um, but these are just, it, but it feels good, right, when you look at it. It's the appealing factor is there. So you want your consumers to stay longer on your e-commerce page. You want to make it look very pleasant. Don't have too many rojak colors inside. Um, product photos look into having a, a mix, a good mix of everything. It's not about this product, 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 product. People get damn tired about it. You need to make it like lifestyle, so you have people element, you know, like, how your product will be like in, in, in the sky or something like that. You want to focus on fabric material as well, so you want to go into a bit of the story, why this product is good, it could be technology. So this is how you need to kind of ensure beautiful product photos. Promotion. Have to learn Malaysia's uh, promotion kicks. You must, uh, like it or not, try to always have a discount. So you notice this 18% off or 25% off. Free shipping, free gift, free shipping here, free gift vouchers to claim. So all this, if you can put it in, yes, it looks damn cluttered, but it helps your sales. So do it, okay? Ratings, this is something that I need to emphasize strongly for all of you. Personally, if anyone who buys product is so rare that they'll buy a product without ratings, you probably will hit the jingle if you have that. Now, ratings uh, ideally should be 4.5 star and above. If can, 4.8 and above is the best. But if you can't, your product is just average quality, try to at least hit 4.5. Um, and have very good positive testimonial. Sometimes this testimonial, you have to also focus on making sure if they can write, don't just talk about fast delivery. It's always like that, oh, I received in two days. That's the only testimonial. It's not strong enough. Um, <clears throat> so you want to have them to actually put in pictures and images as well. I'll give you some examples later on Taobao, how they actually do it with extremely good ratings and testimonials. Now, how do you get this? Now, the strategy on getting this is you need to give them incentive. When you send your product to your buyer, you either give them an additional free gift and a little note saying thank you so much, we hope that you can write a review on us, uh, something like that. Or you can give them a special voucher code that they can use to do a second purchase. So think about giving them tips so that you can get those ratings. Now, this is more for existing business who already have ratings. You want to continue with this strategy. For new businesses who have zero ratings, uh, this one I shouldn't, shouldn't share here, but, but, but you can probably go around it. You give some special discount to your friends, your personal friends. Get them to write a testimonial for you. Because at the end of the day, people buy based on ratings. You want to at least knock in minimum 10 ratings for people to consider. And even 10 ratings is relative. Huh? So as I said, relative, when you go back to a slide where how you appear with your competitors, you need to make sure you have more ratings than them, or at least equal by par. Human psychology is they will, they will buy based on the number of units sold as well. Vibrancy, if you have a product that has different colors, this mix sometimes with human elements and put more colors and variants onto, onto the show. Especially fashion lifestyle brands, uh, t -shirt, uh, like shirts and <coughs> shoes. Originality, okay, this is something that I need to emphasize. A lot of time people don't put branding, you should put branding, because people won't buy, people think that you're made in China if you don't put a brand. Okay, and then, um, original establishment versus fake. So if you could 
in fact, be consistent to get into the Zara mall or shopping mall, that would be best because people trust it. There is a, even a stronger sense of trust. If you don't have this, then by all means, make sure your ratings are very high or your number of sales units are very high. So how do you increase your sales units? Marketing. Even the first 1,000 units you're selling without profit, sell. Because the idea is you wanted to get high number of sales. Marketing comes with a cost, but as long as it doesn't make you lose money or you lose a little bit, it's still worthwhile for you to invest. Because you have to think about the next 1,000 people who buy your product because of the first 1,000. That matters. Yeah? Human element. So lifestyle products again, or whatever products, try to inject a human element because people want to feel how is it for me to be in that, you know, to be using your product. So think about human element if you can add in. So let's do a little case study. Which one will have more appeal to you? And why? One, two, three. One. One, all three colors. All three. Why? Three. More options. More options, okay. More details. More details. Alright, what else? Appreciate it. Appreciate it. It's not like promotion. Yeah. <laughs> what else? What else do you see there? Lots of benefits. Lots of benefits. Okay. Brand. Brand. One year warranty. One year warranty. Wow, see? See, everyone will buy this rice cooker, right? I should sell rice cooker to them. <laughs> but you get an idea, right? Like, the, the thing is, if you look at Amazon website, their website is very clean. It's only in Malaysia, which is very different. <laughs> it's very rajak, right? But the thing is, people buy, people pay attention, isn't it? So the thing is, the good thing about sometimes in all this uh, e-commerce, is you can create a few accounts. So it could be this is the same owner, you know. But I just put a few so that you'll choose one out of my own category, my own portfolio. That's also another strategy. That's why you know why, why brands like to launch new products. Actually, the new product, even Maggie, right? Got so many new Maggie instant noodles, new flavors. They don't do as well as the current Maggie, the classic Maggie curry. But still, they launch. Why? Because I'm going to occupy so much of the space. You, you, if you're going to come and shop, you're still going to choose one. You might as well choose me. Lah. It's either my new flavors or my own classic flavor. It doesn't matter. I'm still getting the sales. So this is a strategy of how you play the game. This one, I uh, hope no one from Lazada and shop here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, content marketing. Uh, if we have a bit more time, I will look into showing you some... Actually, I really want to show you this e-commerce site. You know? China market and uh, the e-commerce in China is very different. I use Taobao a lot. I buy a lot of Taobao stuff and I bring it to Malaysia. Now what is interesting to learn from Taobao in China is that it's very competitive um, and you can see that whatever that they actually showcase in terms of product information is extremely rich. A lot richer than what I see in Lazada and Shopee. So if you want to use a benchmark to improve yourself, um, don't just rely on what you see in the category in our e-commerce. 
you want to be better, you look at Amazon, Google for these categories in Amazon or Taobao in China. image key benefit um, and then they look at exactly the circumference that you can actually achieve. You can use app in terms of how many square meters and how does it work in terms of the, the way it moves. You know I'm swiping like the 10 time now it's like, and there's still a lot of information. How does it look like from all the different angles and then what are the technology they use um, and this is like the, the slide still. You see, the information is endless that they are actually displaying. Now, the thing is, like, human psychology is this. Uh, the more information you display, people think you're good. You're damn good. Whether it's the right or wrong information, it doesn't matter. You know, that's the thing, you know? So, think about information, displaying this information. You really invest once only in your e-commerce store. Please invest in this. No matter how good you do on Facebook and bring people leads to your e-commerce, when they come to your e-commerce, they don't want to buy, they don't buy really. So you need to keep on giving them a very good content. I'm going to give you another case study of, um, of a milk powder brand. So this is a baby milk powder from, I actually translate it, it's supposed to be Mandarin. So they put with certification, you know, and then they have this Denmark association. So that's important, and a castle at the back because Denmark is famous for royalty. And then it talks a bit about non-GMO is purely organic, uh, that the farm is is really like a big big size of a of a field for the cows to, to graze. And then it's like 1,000 days for this cow to, to live in the pastures. So and then all this endorsement from different organic bodies, certification, what does it do? What are benefits to your mind and your gut? And then the <clears throat> how do they do the warehouse warehousing even to make sure that you it is under the right temperature and control? What are the other products that they have from the front back side even at the bottom? What are the even the nutrition that you get? The ingredients list. Um, what age of the child that you can take this? How do you actually make this product? And again, Danish affirmation. Then you look at the ratings and so can you imagine how how much information that you can see from just a one product like this and there's something to learn actually from Taobao in China because I think in Lazada and Shopee you don't really get so much of this yet you don't get quality information going this way Okay, I want to I want to show you one very good uh, business case on on um, Lazada's comforter. Okay, I was just trying to research what's the difference between a comforter in Lazada and a comforter in Taobao, China. So I show you this is Lazada. It tells you basically only one image, maybe different colors. Okay, and then after that, some key benefit. Just like this, just like this, different colors, many different colors, and this. Oh my god, right? So please don't do this. I don't know what value it adds, but you always think about what value it adds, okay? Now I'll show you another one from Taobao, China. So this is Taobao, China. Man Qi Ren is the brand. Okay, let's look at this one. What kind of image do they have? Wow, pretty good, okay? Not bad, feeling very comfortable. Sleeping there. So let's look at what it says here. So it talks about the ingredient, about the price. Wow. Look, wow, comfortable only, wow. not selling the bed, but it's as if they're selling the bed, isn't it? Do you feel like you want to sleep on this bed? You, you feel like that, right? The other side products they have. Uh, okay, image, lifestyle, um, the colors, again, lifestyle, 
fabric, something about the fabric, something, uh, okay, see, lifestyle, lifestyle, how comfortable it is, okay, again, this bed. So for a comfortable brand, which one will you buy? The one in the Zanka or this one? This one, right? So can you imagine the feeling it generates is also very important. So it's not always about product, but it's also the aspiration. So if you want to sell a comforter, you want to sell the concept of wonderful, comfortable sleeping in a, like, a, like a royal, you know, things like that. So that's it for the current e-com case study. I'll move back to my slide on content marketing. Okay, content marketing. So I'm going to share with you a lot of tips for today so you quickly just grasp it and see how it applies to your brand. Aspirational achievements. Like I said, lifestyle images are all aspirational. This is how all the mobile phones are doing branding, by the way. They don't tell you this feature is good, what features I have. They don't go that way already. They use celebrity. They show you the lifestyle that they actually have and how, does, how, how cool it looks, how sexy it looks with my product. So aspirational. <laughs> solution outcome. Whatever product you are trying to solve a problem, right? You can also pin some solution to it. So, for example, the one is very lovely, and the right is a slimming thing, slimming product. So you want to, in one visual, you can kind of tell people what they're going to get out of it. Try to mix human touch and product. So sometimes you see your Facebook ads, um, just pure product may not entice people, just pure human being, people don't know what you're selling. So you have to be clever on mixing it, right? So this is a lipstick brand, and then it's Bittera, so you, you, you see the skin on the hands, and then uh, the food is quite given, it's always enjoyment of food. Next is play up your RTV. So again, the power of Bittera, how, how can you tell that ingredient story? Uh, made with what natural ingredients, play, play that up. Always play your RTV. Dramatization. <laughs> this is only depending on your brand's persona who are daring and risky. You can go with this. <laughs> so, so, like baby having so much hair is the dramatization, right? This one I think everyone remember, right? David Chen is in all the viewpoint in Malaysia a couple of years ago. It's so weird. <laughs> I wouldn't suggest all the brands to take this action. <laughs> Because it will also affect your brand image, okay? And then like the, if you look, this is actually a fashion brand in China, but look at how long is the eyelash, it's crazy, right? Dramatization, again. Value added content, this is also something that I highly recommend everyone to start doing in order to grow your business. Start with writing editorial contents. Um, so for example, on your right, if you are uh, selling pet food, you can write something on like, on topics that relates to your pets, like 27 ways pets help you in your health. Things we can learn from our pets. Uh, pets owner mistakes, are you putting your pet as at risk? All these are added value. Because you don't just want to sell product, you want to become an information advisor. You want to be a lead in that. So when you do this, you start to build relationship with your consumers and they will stuck to you for almost the rest of their life. Because they know that you are good. So sometimes it's not just about product, but it's also the message. And you play with the fonts, it can come out well enough as well. So you might want to use this in, especially in your positioning. Endorsement. You know, Dynamo, Dynamo ads in the past always use all these guy men with laptops trying to endorse these products. That is also one way if you are in skincare or in food formula category. Anything that requires clinical. Um, research for your consumers to trust you. You can always try to consider portraying an image of a man with a lab coat. It works. Kill is a very good brand uh, who always do that. Uh, when Sunset actually came out with a new range of products many years ago, they actually worked with this professional hairstylist to create the recipe of the new product. So again, it's, nobody actually knows these people from Malaysia because they are all foreigners, right? But it looks like professional. It looks the time is aspirational for us to look at Western Westerners, like all oh, they're smarter, they're better. So the product that they develop should be better as well. That is something that will do with endorsement. You want to bring someone aspirational to endorse your product. 
Testimonials. It's not very simple, right? Like this is a, a skincare product, and they show like how they have eczema, and after that, it's fine. Joy Lab recommends by this lady, and they talk about a story. So again, and then you Facebook is where your business page will have reviews as well. So make sure that if you can keep up to five, it's really fantastic, or at least four point eight and above. So you can also use testimonial as a way to do advertising as well. Local talent versus foreign talent. Local talent, for sure, hands down. Unless you're targeting foreigners, if not, always use local talent. Although the stock images are free with Western images, but it doesn't apply. People cannot relate to you, to, you, to your brand. Remember your target audience, who they are. You need to make them relate. Discount, this is very common. But most of the time, people don't put a discount clearly. So again, like I said, some numbers stands up, right? Put your discount really clear. And if you can go more than 50%, it actually stands out. Because anything less than that, people will not be interested. It's like 10%, forget it. I don't even want to look at that. Cost-related ad. So if your brand wanted to serve a certain purpose, not just about sales, you can go into this cost as well. Because now the young millennials especially are very much driven by social causes. So if you want to target the young millennials, it's good to pick up one or two calls uh, from your brand. For example, Body Shop is very famous for no animal testing in their products. And they are also like cruelty free uh, detergents out there. The next one is minimalism. This one is quite interesting. It's completely opposite of dramatization. So minimalism is very empty to the extent that you, you are trying to wonder what it is, what is it that you're selling. So the idea is to get your attention actually. This is more of a marketing gimmick. Human stories. Um, so this is a simple endorsement of people on, you can run it on Insta stories or your Facebook watch um, to showcase how the other influencers are using your product. Now the thing is, influencer, you no need to always hire someone who are so expensive like you know, you know and all. Within your circle of friends or your current consumers, any one of them who look not bad, decent, put on some makeup, shoot it, that's it. Try to do that kind of thing. Get your family and friends to help you to do this kind of testing model ads. It helps a lot. And I'll show you a sample later if I have time. Giveaways and contests. This one also will work very well. Actually, giveaways, it may not give you quality because they don't buy things from you, right? But what you get is you get their email address and you get their leads that they are interested in such a product as well. So even if they don't buy now, but you can keep on advertising to them once you have their database, eventually one year, two years down the road, they will probably be your buyer because they've seen your brand too often. So one thing good about this kind of giveaways is that you build your database, you build your leads. Free sample for f and well, this is the most effective uh, method. Um, signature market gives uh, away trial packs for 45 ringgit. Wow. All you need to do is just to go to your, take their website. And again, they get a database. See, marketing doesn't come free. Yeah? You have to spend the money. But the money you spend is still low because you're talking about your cost of products. You need to manage it. Um, if you really want to run campaigns, run campaigns that relate to your category. So for example, Fendi is eyewear, right? <laughs> and they run campaigns based on kaleidoscope uh, concept. So they can play with a different kaleidoscope on their, on their app. This is the gimmicks, uh, but this is usually big brands do it. Small brands, I don't recommend because you're wasting your money. This is more of those that have already a very standard on your user. You want to continuously engage them with your brand so that they remember your brand is it. Carousel your product photos. Um, so if you look at Milo Malaysia, you see how interesting they have displayed like their different products as well together. So you know in Facebook you can have this option of carousel photo. Use that because it'll be easy for them, for your for your for your potential user to maneuver. Lastly, oh but not the least, test refine repeat. This is something that I highly recommend. You have so many ideas just now that I've just shared. All these ideas, try to do and test it. Because honestly, I cannot tell you which one works. It depends on your user, depends on your category, depends on the need. 
as well. So the more you test, the more you're able to find out what actually can work for your business. And I cannot emphasize enough, when you test, you, you refine something, you test again. So that's how all the big companies actually do. When they come up with new products, it's always about not just launching right away. After they launch, they learn, they tweak it, then relaunch again. That's why you see a lot of new products that will go and the packaging keep changing because it's a never-ending process of refining. You want to always stay relevant. Um, and lastly is for you guys to understand um, of all this marketing, because marketing is a long term, right? And also can be short term. You need to know how much you're going to invest and what you're going to do every month or every quarter. A lot of people don't do this, this chart, <laughs> except for the big companies. We do this in the marketing, in the corporate world all the time. We identify top three things that we have to do, and then which month and which period of the month we're doing it. So we know how much we're going to spend. You need to do something like this as well, because if not, it'll be too shaky. You spend sometimes here, the next month you don't spend, then the third month you spend again. You're very much dependent on what you receive as sales. That's actually very dangerous. If you're in this business, you need to make sure that you need to invest and dedicate uh, an amount and see how all these different materials work to your advantage through time. Branding takes time. McDonald's, KFC, P&G, Unilever, all doesn't build their brands overnight. It takes a long, long, long time. And consistently advertising, constant, consistent branding as well. So please uh, come up with your own activity plan for the year. So what have you learned today? I'd like some of you to just share a bit about what, what is the most important key takeaway you have learned today, just to get a feel. Uh, I think the most important thing I learned today is uh, actually our product, our business uh, is not actually what we believe as business owners, as employees or employers. It's actually what our customers believe. So if our uh, ratings is bad on, on Google or on Facebook, then that's actually our brand. Very good point. What else? What else? It's on how we market ourselves and uh, to the perspective of a client, uh, how they're going to have a benefit. Secondly, is how we project our content so that they can, because our customer <coughs> will be very impatient. So, yeah. So understand your customer well. Differentiation, yeah. Know how to differentiate, what else? You need to test, test and test. Test your fine page so that you know uh, when to, um, whether you're still relevant in the industry now. The good, the good part about this is that was in this last slide, but that is most important for you, <laughs> which is good. All right, so. Uh, I'm very happy that you guys have learned something. I hope you do. If you don't, then there's like two hours of waste. Um, just to wrap up a little bit. Now, the thing is, um, this is another external third party because I know you all need to do a lot of communication. Um, there is this site um, that actually provides unlimited designs uh, for a very cheap cost. Um, so for those who actually send me the Google form or you can take in the next slide, I can send you the link and you can consider subscribing if you want to do design work. So it's unlimited design for one month for this price. I don't think you can find anywhere else. It's also a, it's a third party platform. So you can, I can send it to you the link if you wanted to use it for your social media. You can do your logo and anything that you want. But you need to provide the brief to them to do it. And you have to set up your own account as well. So I, I stumbled into this because I use it in my other startups that I was consulting. And it was a very good deal for them. Like they get so much. They got their logo done. They got the packaging done. They got their e-commerce, uh, social media posts as well. So it's very, very value for money for this price. So if you want, I can drop this drop in an email. Um, so that is me, Shell. So what I do is I'm a brand consultant, come coach. Uh, I do three to six months program for people, uh, companies. I have uh, basically on advisory, knowledge sharing, template tools, and methodology on branding. I also do workshop facilitation for whether it's half day to few days. 
and I come up with a lot of the modules and also the content. I look into insights, trends, and concepts that the brand can actually own. So, and lastly, I'm also a presenter, like where I am today, thanks to the Salmon uh, invitation. So I do pitching, I do motivational talk, everything. So I'm quite kind of like versatile. So what you could do is you can actually take the image of, you can follow me on LinkedIn, um, because sometimes I will post on marketing tips and strategies, especially on products that I saw in the market. That's my email and you can WhatsApp me for everything. And I would really appreciate if you could scan the QR and just write a feedback about today's session. Because if you think you have benefited the session, it's important to get these feedbacks so that there could be more of these sessions that I can do for, for other business owners. So thank you so much. Is there any questions in on the floor that you would like to ask? So I like questions. Any questions? Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, you provide the logo and the branding, right? If others company or others individual imitate it, is there any legal... Uh... So if you want to protect your logo, you need to trademark it. You have to go to my IPO to trademark it. It costs around... I, less than 1,000 ringgit, basically. It's like 300 over ringgit to register. And then when it's approved six to seven months later, you get that certificate for another 700 million or something, I can't remember. But it's about there. You want to trademark, that's the best way to protect it. Uh, especially within your category. But a lot of small brands, they don't really do it because unless the copycats will only come and copy the big brands, they won't copy your small brands. So don't, don't be too worried about it. Yes, question. Hi, like, like now today that uh, Taobao is doing this live, and e-commerce. So how about Malaysia? Are we going to follow the trend or any idea for Lazada platform and shopping? Actually, you know that Lazada and Taobao is related <laughs> to Alibaba, right? So the live trend will happen, actually already happened, just that it happens during special occasion. So if you look at 11, 11, 12, 12, there is non-stop of streaming already, uh, live streaming. And, and and the thing is, streaming, that happens by organized by Lazada and Shopee themselves. So if you want to be in the picture, you also need to hit a certain sales amount in them that they feel that, oh, you are a value player, a brand, that I can use this as a carrot to engage with my consumers. So Shopee and Lazada also pick brands to, to, to highlight, to give this publicity. And that will be your benefit because then you don't need to pay much of the marketing expenses, right? Um, but don't rely on that because there's only once a year that's going to happen for the big live, uh, live stream. There are day to day, it could be the normal one, but it depends on campaigns. So I know the other Shopee will run like baby fair campaign this month, the next month could be another uh, gadget campaign. So you, you might want to understand when they run these kind of campaigns and see where your category applies, then you talk to them. You try to find out what can, is there something for you that you have to explore. Okay? Great. So thank you so much for today's session. This is going to be the end. Uh, if anyone uh, wants to speak to me, just come over and talk to me then. Some? Okay, bye bye. Okay. If you think uh, this uh, type of program uh, is good, so make sure you uh, tell your friends, share with them. You should come to see that and learn about it because I want people to learn about, you know, uh, product and all. Okay, uh, nothing more. Come, let's go here. Okay, thank you. See you all uh, next time.